The next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on complaints and conduct review. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Michael Matheson for 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, President Officer. When I addressed the Chamber in November on the leadership and performance of policing, I set out my intention to reflect on the operation of police complaints and conduct with key partners. As I said then, I'm open to considering whether there is further scope for further improvement. It is of uh, the utmost importance to, the pub to me and the public, uh, and that there is parliamentary confidence uh, in the police, which is high, and independently justifiably so. But equally, that our systems provide suitable protection for the vast majority of police officers and staff who work hard to keep us safe. Over recent months, I've listened to a range of different perspectives from those directly involved. It's clear to me that the complex issues have emerged in relation to the existing framework, operational responsibilities and procedures that need to be looked at afresh. Five years on from the creation of Police Scotland, the Scottish Police Authority and the Police Investigations and Review Commissioner, the time is right to look at how the structures and processes are working. To do that effectively will require an independent and authoritative assessment. And that is why I, together with the Lord Advocate, have commissioned the Right Honourable Dame Eilish Angelina QC to take this work forward. I'm delighted that Dame Eilish has agreed to lead that review. As members will be aware, she is exceptionally well qualified to scrutinise these issues as a former Procurator Fiscal, Solicitor General and Lord Advocate. Her, understand, uh, her outstanding record of public service in Scotland is well known. Having chaired the Commission on Women Offenders, as well as the Morton Hall Crematorium Investigation, for the City of Edinburgh Council and the National Cremations Investigation for the Scottish Government. More recently, she led the independent review into serious incidents and deaths in police custody in England and Wales for the UK Government. Under Dame Eilish's leadership, the review of complaints handling, investigations and misconduct issues in relation to policing will bring independent scrutiny to the framework and processes for handling complaints against the police and investigating serious incidents and alleged misconduct. As well as assessing the current framework, the review will report on the effectiveness of structures, operational responsibilities and processes. It will also make recommendations for improvements to ensure the system is fair, transparent, accountable and proportionate in order to strengthen public confidence in policing in Scotland. The review will consist of two phases. The first phase will include a consideration of current procedures and guidance to identify areas for immediate improvement. The second phase will include a wider assessment of the frameworks and practice in relation to complaints handling, investigations and misconduct issues. It will cover the work of the Police and Investigation and Review Commissioner, the Scottish Police Authority and Police Scotland. <clears throat> the review will take evidence from a broad range of stakeholders, including the Scottish Police Federation, the Association of Police, Scottish Police Superintendents, the Scottish Chief Police Officers Staff Association, Unison, Unite, as well as the PERC, SPA, Police Scotland and the Crown Office. Dame Eilish may also wish to speak with those who have had experience of the current system to hear their views and understand where further improvements could be made. Recommendations in the final report should take into account human rights considerations, as well as seeking to identify longer-term improvements. Officer, I'm aware that the Justice Committee has invited evidence as part 
of its post-legislative scrutiny of the Police and Fire Reform Scotland Act 2012. I welcome this scrutiny of the landmark legislation that enabled the creation of a single police and fire service. I'm also aware that evidence has been submitted on the provisions within the Act that underpin our current system of police conduct, complaints and investigations. Those provisions were intended to strengthen the governance, accountability and scrutiny arrangements for policing and created a clear statutory framework for independent review and investigation. It's only right that the committee considers this evidence as part of its broader scrutiny of the Act and I look forward to seeing the outcomes of that process. However, as the Cabinet Secretary with responsibility for the overall framework for dealing with police complaints and conduct issues in Scotland, which includes other primary and secondary legislation, I have a duty to ensure that the whole system is working well. And the Lord Advocate has an independent interest as head of the system for the investigation and prosecution of crime in Scotland. The arrangements for complaints handling, investigations and misconduct issues in relation to policing have seen a period of intense parliamentary, media and public scrutiny. It's a framework that must ultimately build public confidence in policing and events of recent months have raised questions about the way the system works and whether it could be improved. It's only right that I listen to those questions and act decisively to address them, which is why the Lord Advocate and I have commissioned this review. The key outcomes of the review will be to ensure that roles and responsibilities at all levels are clear. There are agreed protocols that balance transparency with an appropriate level of confidentiality. And the framework and processes are fair, transparent, accountable and proportionate, upholding fundamental human rights. Fairness, transparency, accountability, proportionality. These are the guiding principles of the review and go to the very heart of what any system which holds public services to account should deliver. The commitment to uphold fundamental human rights is embedded in police training, in the oath taken by officers and is central to Police Scotland's professional ethics and values. This is to ensure that policing operations respect the human rights of all people and officers who in turn should have their rights respected. This must also be central to the process for handling police complaints, conduct issues and investigations. It is vital that the police are held to account when things go wrong. Policing by consent depends upon that accountability. And it's essential that lessons are learned and improvements made to prevent mistakes, bad practice and criminality recurring in the future. In order to do that effectively, our systems must treat all parties fairly and justly if they are to earn the trust and respect of those involved and of the wider public. Let me also be clear about what the review will not do. It will not consider the role of the Lord Advocate in investigating criminal complaints against the police. Nor will it look at the role of HMICS in scrutinising the state effectiveness, efficiency of Police Scotland and the Scottish Police Authority. It is also important to emphasise that the review will not re-examine specific cases or review specific decisions although they may provide evidence for an overall assessment of the efficacy of current systems and processes. <clears throat> there are a number of high-profile criminal investigations relating to serious incidents involving the police currently underway. Those investigations are a matter for the Lord Advocate and it would be wrong to suggest that this review should examine those cases or preempt the investigation process. Officer, I am confident 
that this review, under the authoritative leadership of Dame Eilish Angelini, will bring fresh scrutiny to the framework and structures we established five years ago to ensure that they are robust and true to the principles that I have outlined. It is essential that our system for complaints handling, investigations, misconduct issues in relation to policing are fair, transparent and accountable, respecting the rights of all those involved. Systems that police officers, staff and the public can have confidence in. Let me finish, President Officer, by putting on record my thanks and appreciation for the work of Police Scotland, the SPA, the PUC, HMICS and the Crown Office, commending all those who work to keep our communities safe. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions and then we shall move on. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question would press the request to speak buttons now. And I call Liam Kerr. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. The past 12 months have been challenging for the leadership of the police and shine a spotlight on the structures that were put in place by the SNP and whether they were, and perhaps are, not fit for purpose. Cabinet Secretary is right to say public confidence in the police is crucial, and recent events, particularly in and around November 2017, have had a negative impact on public and parliamentary confidence. It's clear lessons must be learned. It's within this context that the Justice Committee has launched a post-legislative scrutiny process of the Police and Fire Reform Act to try to get to the bottom of and to what extent the structures were responsible and in any event what can be done better. So the crucial question arising is whether the Cabinet Secretary has confidence that there will be no interference with that inquiry by this one. Can he give a reassurance in that regard? And secondly, events, particularly in November, brought challenges on all levels of the service, and indeed, the SNP government. It is vital that all agencies and structures are examined forensically to ensure what went wrong is fully understood. So to that end, can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that Dame Angelini will have full freedom to investigate everything, including the Cabinet Secretary's actions and those of his officials, and where necessary, constructively criticise, with a view to ensuring it can never happen again? Michael Matheson. Yes, and also, I'm uh, grateful for the member's uh, comments, uh, other than that of his latter point, which, as ever, he tends to miss the point uh, when it comes to these types of issues, which is becoming a, a repeated uh, action of the member uh, in these issues. Uh, the, uh, the investigation which will be conducted by Dame Eilish Angelini will be one which will be uh, independent and will be conducted under the terms of reference which have been uh, published this afternoon, uh, setting that out. Uh, and for anyone who knows someone uh, such as Dame Eilish Angelini and the work that she's conducted previously, to suggest that she would be subject to some form of external influence in conducting that work clearly does not recognise her integrity and her commitment to carrying out this particular type of investigation. So I have every confidence that she will conduct it in a fair, appropriate and in an independent fashion and arrangements have been put in place to allow her to uh, do so. On the members uh, more... Uh, uh, more reasoned uh, point in relation to interference with the Parliamentary uh, Committee. I've got uh, no doubt in the wider uh, investigation which the committee uh, is intending to undertake in relation to the uh, Police and Fire Reform Act uh, uh, will be uh, one which will be uh, broad looking at a whole range of aspects of policing and also the fire and rescue service uh, within Scotland. However, there is a need to look very specifically at issues relating to complaint and conduct matters and how these issues are investigated and the purpose behind this review is to have that much more detailed analysis of that area of responsibility and that's why the work which will be taken forward as part of this review will help to inform whether there are further measures that can be taken forward in the future. No doubt uh, Dame Eilish Angelini in considering the work that the Justice Committee is undertaking will wish to consider the evidence that's been presented uh, to the committee However, this will be a much more detailed consideration of the very specific aspects relating to complaints and conduct matters. Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I thank the Minister for advance sight of his statement. Indeed, I am pleased that he has agreed to the calls to commission this review. The accusations and counter-accusations swirling around senior officers in recent months has not been healthy for the force, and it 
its worst, I think, has resembled something of a soap opera, that the complaints handling process has been slow and poorly understood by the public has not helped. Most notably, the discrepancy that when a senior officer resigns, the investigation stops and any potential lessons for policing lost, I think, is a problem. So can the minister confirm that this is a key reason for this investigation and the investigation will address it? Likewise, for senior, non-senior officers, there are reports of a confusing and complex complaints landscape. Understanding the roles of the PERC, the SPA, professional standards and HICS is a challenge just as much for officers as for the wider public. So can the minister confirm that this review will seek to simplify that framework for complaints for all officers and ranks? And finally, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to confirm the timeline and when he expects uh, Dame uh, Elis Angelini to report? Thank you. Michael Matson. Uh, I'm grateful to the points raised by the member um, and I'll seek to try and address each of them uh, in turn, all of which are important issues uh, that need to be given proper consideration. Uh, the member made specific reference to the issue of uh, matters relating to uh, ongoing investigations into individuals who may subsequently retire from uh, the service or leave the service. Uh, and clearly there are questions to be asked about the existing arrangements for dealing with these matters. That will be something which this review can give consideration to. Is there a need for a change in the way in which we deal with these matters? And if so, what measures need to be put in place in order to address that? Uh, so that complaints or conduct issues which are being investigated at that particular point uh, may be able to continue. So I can confirm it will be able to look at that type of uh, very issue. The member also raised the issue around uh, some of the complexities in the matter. And I recognise there are complexities in the matter. And we need to ensure that we have a system which uh, both those who are uh, having a complaint investigated against them, that they have faith in how the process operates and clear sight of how the process will operate and that it operates in a proportionate fashion given the nature of the complaint that may have been uh, received and that those who have lodged complaints have confidence in the transparency and the accountability that accompanies that process and how that uh, is undertaken. And that's why having a look at the whole system will be absolutely critical in ensuring that we can simplify the process where possible but also clarify roles at specific points uh, within that process to ensure that those who are uh, being investigated or have lodged a complaint have a clearer understanding of the process. So simplifying it would be another aspect that uh, Dame Eilish's uh, uh, review can consider. In relation to the timeline and discussions uh, which we've had with Dame Eilish, uh, uh, on this matter, I would expect this work to take around 18 months to potentially two years, uh, given the detailed nature of it, but also why it's been broken into two sections to deal with some of the immediate issues around process and guidance, uh, which can be uh, identified at an early stage and which action can be taken on, and that much more detailed work in looking at the wider framework uh, between the different parts of the complaints system to ensure that they are appropriately being addressed, inclu addressed, including issues relating to both primary and secondary legislation. Uh, I have quite a few people wanting to ask questions, so if we're succinct with questions and answers, we should get there. Rona Mackay, followed by Margaret Mitchell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary assure me that officers who wish to express their views to the team carrying out the review will be able to do so anonymously? Michael Matheson. Presiding Officer, it will be for Dame Eilish to determine the process that she takes forward in determining how she uh, conducts this uh, review. Uh, no doubt she will want to engage with a whole range of different stakeholders, including individuals who may have experience of the complaints and conduct investigations uh, process. Uh, and no doubt she will want to give consideration how to uh, facilitate access to individuals uh, who may wish to engage with her on these matters and to do so in an anonymous uh, fashion. So uh, it will be a matter for uh, uh, Demelish Angelini to determine, but I would imagine that she would wish to provide an opportunity for those parties who may uh, wish to give uh, evidence to her or to discuss their experiences with her to do so anonymously to ensure uh, their protection and also to ensure that she gets as full a picture as possible uh, of how the system is operating at the present moment. Margaret Mitchell followed by Stuart McMillan. Will the Cabinet Secretary confirm that the review will cover both civil and criminal complaints and within the current complaints process has there been any consideration of the Apologies Scotland Act 2016 as an effective and efficient way of resolving complaints and disputes to the satisfaction of both parties? Michael Matheson. Officer, it will be able to look at both the civil aspects and also the criminal aspects. However, it will not look at the uh, aspects which are led on by the Crown Office and the Lord Advocate and issues that I uh, made reference to in the course of 
uh, at my, uh, my statement. Uh, in relation to the work which has been taken forward by uh, the convener of the Justice Committee and the committee members, uh, it will allow us to look at how the existing arrangements are working within uh, the uh, present primary legislation that is provided through the 2012 Act and to see whether there is a need for that to be amended or changed or whether the secondary legislation uh, which sets out the regulations for dealing many, with many of these matters it needs to be uh, changed. So in relation to that, I hope it will uh, be able to pick up on some of the issues which our own committee is given consideration to, uh, but to do so in a much more detailed fashion, looking very specifically at some of the regulation aspects uh, which we have in place, uh, which deal with police complaints, conduct and investigations matters, and to consider whether they need to be addressed or changed in the future. Stuart McMillan, followed by John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary clarify whether the review will actually have an impact on any cases currently being investigated as part of a complaint or a misconduct procedure? Michael Matheson. Uh, President Officer, no. Uh, the uh, issues of complaint and conduct uh, that are being investigated at the present moment will continue to be uh, investigated through the existing arrangements which are in place. It may be that the review will want to consider some of the cases that the process has managed in the past eh, as examples of analysing how the existing system is operating, but it will not review individual cases and it will not start to look at existing cases which are presently being investigated. John Finney, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the early sight of the, the report and welcome, Dame Ailish's uh, appointment. The, the report, you, your statement talked about balance between transparency and, um, and uh, confidentiality, Cabinet Secretary. I wonder if there's another balance that you think this report could pick up, and that is when what's effectively a service complaint turns into a complaint about an individual officer. And we've known that appear, particularly for senior officers in relation to grievances, employment issues, indeed civil dispute, and the resulting publicity. Would you envisage the complaint uh, process picking up on that, or this review picking up on that, please? Always through the chair, please, Michael Matheson. Uh, President Officer, I think the member raises a, a very important point because the issue around uh, transparency and accountability is a matter which has been raised with me on a number of occasions. Uh, and a key part of that is also about proportionality of the process uh, around how the complaints and conduct and investigations process is presently uh, operating. Uh, and that's why I'm very clear about the principles which are driving uh, this particular uh, review in order to ensure uh, that it's fair, just, uh, accountable, transparent, it's proportionate, uh, and that people can have confidence in it. In relation to the very specific uh, uh, type of example which the member made reference to, that's exactly the type of issue that the review can give consideration to. Um, how has it been managed within the existing uh, guidance and regulations? Is there clarity around responsibilities? And if there is a change uh, for the purpose of how any complaint should be handled, then who has clear responsibility for them progressing that and taking uh, that forward and whether it needs to be uh, escalated as well. And that's why this very detailed uh, review will allow us to explore these very issues uh, that uh, the member has raised in a detailed fashion in order to ensure that both officers and uh, who may be subject of the process, but also, and staff who could be subject to the process, but also members of the public uh, can have confidence in how that system is operating. Liam MacArthur, followed by George Adam. Thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. Can I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement, acknowledge the impeccable credentials Dame Ellis has to carry out this review, although express my regret that it is not the wider uh, independent uh, commission review that uh, I have been uh, advocating. But given the circumstances that gave rise to this review, namely uh, concerns around the Cabinet Secretary's involvement in the decision by SPA to allow the return of the former Chief Constable following allegations of gross misconduct, can I assure the Chamber that Dame Ellis will be invited to look at the role of ministers and their officials uh, in processes such as this in future? Michael Matheson. Uh, the first thing to say, Mem uh, President Officer, is the Member is wrong uh, for the reasons as to why he said this review has been undertaken. There have been some issues around how the complaints and conduct process and investigations have been undertaken for uh, some time now, uh, which predate uh, issues relating to uh, November. However, there are issues around how it matters around the Chief Constable, the former Chief Constable's uh, case uh, was dealt with. So, for example, there were suggestions that it should have been dealt with through a grievance process, uh, rather than through a, a misconduct or complaints process, uh, which uh, need to be given consideration to, uh, and the review will be able to look at that. But the uh, underlying issues of concern uh, that have uh, come about as a result and have led to this particular review uh, are not specific uh, to November. They are 
more deep-rooted and relate to a number of different matters which have been ongoing for some time, which I now believe uh, now is the time to address an independent review will be able to uh, look at these matters in detail. George Adam, followed by Maurice Corey. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Sec Secretary explain to me, and this is purely to aid my own understanding of the need for the review, if the Police Investigations and Review Commissioner has audited the Scottish Police Authority's complaints handling procedure and the SPA itself has undertaken its own review, why is this review needed? Michael Matheson. So, you know, so the first thing I should say, I, I do welcome the work that's been undertaken by the Police Investigation and Review Commissioner in auditing the uh, complaints handled by the uh, SPA and also the work that's now been taken forward by the SPA as a result of that audit uh, in reviewing their complaints handling process and the decision to re-establish their uh, complaints and conduct uh, uh, committee to consider these issues uh, in individual uh, cases. Uh, I think the work that they are taking forward will help to improve the system as it operates at the present moment. However, as I've mentioned, there are issues and questions which have been raised in relation to the broader framework uh, and operational responsibilities which go beyond the scope of the audit uh, that was undertaken by the PERC and also the internal review which was carried out by the SPA and A questions, in my view, uh, and that also with the Lord Advocate, could only be resolved uh, through uh, an independent examination uh, which would look at the whole system uh, and its constituent parts and how they work uh, collectively uh, together. And that's why we've commissioned Dame Eilish to undertake this independent review to ensure that we're looking at all aspects of the system rather than, uh, uh, rather than uh, uh, particularly limited aspects to do with just the SPA or the work that's carried out by the PERC, but the whole system from Police Scotland, the PERC, uh, the SPA, and how that whole process connects with each other. Maurice Corey, followed by Claire Baker. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. Um, the Cabinet Secretary has said that a key outcome of the review will be to ensure roles and responsibilities at all levels are clear. Can you confirm that this will include a recommendation that the Cabinet Secretary for Justice should not interfere in the independence of the Scottish Police Authority? Michael Matheson. Uh, President Officer, ministers are not involved in conduct matters which are presently dealt with by the SPA. Claire Baker, followed by Claire Hawkey. Um, thank you, President Officer. I welcome the review and the role of Dame Elish. I would like to highlight that those listed in the statement for consultation are all police and Crown Office representatives. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary said that Dame Elish may also wish to speak with those who have had experience of the current system. I'd assumed that meant constituents, but his reply to Rona Mackay suggested maybe it means serving officers, so some clarity around that would be helpful. Um, the Cabinet Secretary will know that I have raised frustrations over the powers of PERC in this chamber over the investigation of the Sheku Bayou case. And while I appreciate the difficulties of including live cases, and to be clear, I'm not asking for an examination of that case or any presumption of the investigation, but PERC is a relatively new organisation and the experience of the Bayou family is critical to understanding where improvements and changes must be made. And I hope the Cabinet Secretary and the review are able to recognise this. Michael Matheson. Uh, Sign officer, in relation to the member's point uh, regarding uh, matters relating to PERC, and uh, the member uh, has raised a number of occasions the powers that the PERC have at the present moment. It will be able to look at its existing powers and well as a need for those powers to be uh, changed uh, uh, in some shape or fashion in the future. And the review will obviously give consideration uh, to that. In relation to um, uh, engaging with individuals who may have been involved in a complaints process or a conduct or investigations process, uh, there are not uh, uh, police officers. Of course, that will be a matter for Dame Eilish to determine. But my view would be is that it would be perfectly reasonable for uh, the review uh, team to engage with individuals who may have experience of the complaints and investigations process, um, who are not officers but may, uh, uh, may have been uh, 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 non-serving members of the police service or members of the public. Um, however, I'm also conscious that Dame Eilish will be mindful of the ongoing investigation work that's been conducted in relation to the very specific case uh, which the member made uh, reference to. But there will be nothing to uh, prevent uh, uh, Dame Eilish Angelini from choosing to engage directly uh, with uh, individuals who've made complaints and their experience of the complaints process that are not police officers if she believes that's an appropriate means by which she can actually gather further intelligence and understanding of how the present system is operating. This is not about just trying to get it right for police officers. It's also about trying to get it right for those who make complaints in the process. 
uh, and to ensure that it's one which is balanced and it's proportionate and that both those who are making complaints and those who may be getting investigated can have faith in how that system operates. And it's one which is fair and it's just to both parties and how it deals with these matters. A quick question and answer from Claire Hockey, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary advise, will this review be similar to Dame Angelini's review of deaths in custody in England and Wales? Michael Matheson. Uh, President Officer, the report which was carried out by Dame Eilish into uh, deaths in custody in police custody in England and Wales um, is a report which is presently being considered by the Lord Advocate uh, to consider its implications for us here in Scotland. However, the remit of this review is somewhat different from that. But no doubt, the, once the Lord Advocate has been given the opportunity to consider the findings of the uh, review which was carried out in England and Wales uh, by Dame Eilish, she'll be able to give consideration as to whether there are any implications for us here in Scotland. It is worth keeping in mind that the uh, previous inspection of custody uh, facilities within Police Scotland uh, undertaken by HMICS back in 2014 uh, demonstrated that the way in which custody services were being delivered by uh, Police Scotland uh, were appropriate uh, and of a good standard. Uh, however, there will always be room for potential improvement on these matters, but the uh, very specific issue relating to that report is a matter for a Lord Advocate and it's presently been given uh, a very detailed consideration for any changes we need to take into account here in Scotland. I have been unable to take Graham Day and that concludes questions on Michael Matheson's statement on complaints and conduct review. Uh, we will move on to the next item of business. I'll give a few seconds for people to move around.